Hi everyone, my name is Chris Elston and I'm the Chief Robotics Manager at the Yamaha Robotics Group. Today, I'll be showcasing a Yamaha Linear Conveyor Module where we'll get an overview, how it works, some of its strengths, how to assemble it, and finally programming. Let's get started. The Yamaha LCMR200 is a servo conveying system designed using linear motor technology utilizing individual servo powered pallets or carriages called XBOTs. I like to just call them pallets. Up to 50 pallets can be programmed to stop at any virtual workstation you design within a conveying process. You can control each one bi-directionally or varying the speed independently, all within your PLC logic. For example, if you want to set up three stations along a one meter section today, and then tomorrow, you need to add a fourth station, no problems. Just program a new virtual station and you're all set. No need to add any pneumatic valves, pallet stoppers, lift stations, or sensors. A key benefit to the servo-driven pallet system is smooth acceleration and deacceleration, which provides faster transfer times, as well as eliminating shifting work pieces when coming to a stop. The LCM servo pallet can improve tack time on a production line up to six times faster than a traditional chain or belt mover system. For example, if your manufacturing plant runs three shifts for five days a week, a maximum throughput an LCM system can deliver is a two second tack time. That will produce 10.3 million parts a year at the heart of your automation system. This is probably the number one question we get asked. The servo pallets move around the system via magnetism. The LCM is basically a flat motor with the magnets mounted on the pallet and the stator coils of the motor are powered on a fixed module by 48 volts DC. Multiple pallets and modules make up the simple construction of an LCM conveyor. Mechanical engineers can literally Lego the conveyor system together. Modules are available in different fixed lengths, 200, 300, 500, or one meter long. You only need to mount the modules down on a precision flat surface and connect your 48 volts DC power to the bottom of the unit. The modules contain THK bearing rails, motor coils, and a magnetic strip reader that does two jobs. First, it senses the position of the pallet at all times, even on power up. There is no need to origin the pallets or home them. All of the pallets are absolute all the time. Secondly, it reads the unique ID on the pallet. That means there is no need to purchase a separate RFID system. If you are old school like me, Four hex bolts and proc sensors are a thing of the past. Only those that understand binary will actually get that joke. Because the module is completely self-contained, the servo amplifiers for the coils are built into the bottom of the unit. There is not a separate amplifier mounted in the electrical cabinet. Panel builders, you are welcome. The pallet construction is very simple and made up of a robust THK recirculating ball bearing with wipers, magnets, and a reader strip, all of which can be rebuildable and replaceable. Since there are no moving parts, the only maintenance required is just lubricating your THK bearings every six months. No belts, chains, gearboxes, or ball screws to maintain. Magnetism is a thing of beauty. Typically, the LCM unit is used to compact an assembly line in a straight line process instead of using a circular dial table layout to save floor space. You'll find it very flexible to lay out multi-layers or multi-layings to solve your transportation problems or overcome bottleneck issues with mismatched cycle times and automation processes. The LCM can be used from multi-layer double or even triple deck with an elevator transfer or a side-by-side -side horizontal layout. Some even like to use the LCM like a long assembly walking beam. Floor space is typically a premium for most manufacturers, especially in Japan, where stacking the LCM is preferred. In North America, side-by-side -side is preferred for access reasons. Station-to-station -station compactness is 210 millimeter minimum center lines between stations can be achievable. When the LCM pallet stops at its station from its 2500 millimeter per second velocity, the stop precision of the pallet is plus or minus five micron of repeatability this is what we call robot ready. There is no need to capture the pallet, pin it, lift and locate it, 
to present the workpiece to the robot. When the pallet arrives, a precision industrial robot can interact with the pallet immediately. Because of the dual THK rails and the solid aluminum extrusion design, one of the most impressive things you can do is exert up to 200 pounds of assembly force from the top direction, directly on the pallet, while the servo is on in station, or up to 75 pounds of assembly force perpendicular to the rail. Parallel force is limited to 10 pounds due to magnetic coupling power. Knowing where every single pallet is on the system is a control strength of having absolute positioning of the pallets fed back to individual PLC registers is actually a controls engineer's dream. Hey Connor, let's show them how this LCM unit goes together mechanically. So what kind of parts do we need? Yeah, Chris, so you'll actually need a few parts. Obviously we need the modules, oh, okay. a nice machine surface, and then we need our connection units or end plates, and then some electrical connections. With these connection units, we're actually able to combine modules together to form a single cluster. Or with the end plates, you can have it a cluster end and go straight to a transfer module. Cool, Connor, so all we have to do is bolt this down and that's it? Yeah, Chris, so with the end plates or connection plates bolted down, you just seat the dowels mating surface from the module and then you just throw in a couple bolts. Looks like Yamaha really tried to make this mechanically easy, especially if you run into trouble maybe. Yeah, of course, obviously, we hope all of your automation stuff runs as long as possible, but when a module does go down, you just take out a few bolts, pop out the old module and put the new one in. But what about the electrical? Isn't there some wires that we have to connect to make this thing work? Yeah, so we use what we call as YC link. It's actually running on EtherCAT. Mm, okay. The feedback communication comes in the left side of the module and exits the right side and daisy chains to the next cluster. So we also have dual 48 volt power. So we have the separate control and motor power, which allows for semi-automatic loading stations for operator load and unload on a work cell. Wow, thanks Connor for showing me how this goes together mechanically. But now for my favorite part, the PLC integration. Hold on, Chris. We need to put on the slider first. Ah, oh, I forgot about that part. Being a controls engineer for 25 years now, integration of the LCM was important to Yamaha to make the software PLC centric to machine builders and end users alike in manufacturing. On our demo machine, we are using an Allen Bradley Compact Logix PLC as a single PLC to run the machine and the LCM units here. Here you can see the YHX LCM controller. This one has six transfer cards in it. Four of them control corner modules and two of them control horizontal transfers, as well as the CPU and power unit. Each of the transfers and all of the pallets are controlled via the same PLC with just ladder logic. The PLC can control up to 50 pallets via Ethernet IP and 16 transfers maximum. Add-on instructions, or AOI blocks, are provided free to customers in North America to program the LCM conveyor natively in RS Logics 5000 software. What's remarkable about this programming style is that you do not need a motion PLC. You don't need kinetics amplifiers to control all 50 axes independently in your PLC. You can run everything on your machine from a single PLC source without having a secondary traffic computer or a PLC to manage the servo conveyor. Having all of that flexibility to make your own traffic logic in the PLC is a blessing in my book as a seasoned controls engineer. Of course, email us at tech.support at wiregeinc.com to ask us about sample ladder logic and panel view templates so you can see the programming style yourself. AOIs inside the PLC manage the virtual stations. Because the skeleton structure is pre-built for you, as you import the AOI into your project, a user-defined type or UDT will be created in the PLC called an LCM tag, which becomes the database for the stations, pallets, and traffic control of your production line. Through this tag structure, you can create references, track parts, or audit your system very easily with LCM AOIs that are provided. We are planning on releasing function blocks for the LCM and other PLC platforms, such as Siemens TIA Portal, or an Omron NJ NX series in SysMac Studio, for example. Of course, any PLC software that supports custom function block creation can be supported to run the LCM with or without custom function blocks, so long as it can communicate via a standard field bus, such as Ethernet IP, Profinet, CC Link IE, or EtherCAT IO.
Thank you for watching. I hope you learned more about the linear conveyor module system. If you have any questions or would like to see a demo, please reach out to your local account representative or visit nefautomation.com or yrginc.com for more information.